Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman Book 15 A Song for Occupations 1. A Song for Occupations In the labor of engines and trades, in the labor of fields, I find the developments, and find the eternal meanings. Work men and work women, were all educations practical and ornamental well displayed out of me, what would it amount to? Were I, as the head teacher, charitable proprietor, wise statesman, what would it amount to? Were I to you as the boss, employing and paying you, would that satisfy you? The learned, virtuous, benevolent, and the usual terms. A man like me, and never the usual terms. Neither a servant nor a master I. I take no sooner a large price than a small price. I will have my own whoever enjoys me. I will be even with you, and you shall be even with me. If you stand at work in a shop, I stand as nigh as the nighest in the same shop. If you bestow gifts on your brother or dearest friend, I demand as good as your brother or dearest friend. If your lover, husband, wife, is welcome by day or night, I must be personally as welcome. If you become degraded, criminal, ill, then I become so for your sake. If you remember your foolish and outlawed deeds, do you think I cannot remember my own foolish and outlawed deeds? If you carouse at the table, I carouse at the opposite side of the table. If you meet some stranger in the streets, and love him or her, why, I often meet strangers in the street, and love them. Why, what have you thought of yourself? Is it you, then, that thought yourself less? Is it you that thought the President greater than you, or the rich better off than you? or the educated, wiser than you. Because you are greasy, or pimpled, or were once drunk, or a thief, or that you are diseased, or rheumatic, or a prostitute, or from frivolity or impotence, or that you are no scholar and never saw your name in print, do you give in that you are any less immortal. 2. Souls of men and women, it is not you I call unseen, unheard, untouchable and untouching. It is not you I go argue, pro and con about, and to shelter whether you are alive or no. I own publicly who you are if nobody else owns. Grown, half-grown, and babe, of this country and every country, indoors and outdoors, one just as much as the other, I see, and all else behind or through them. The wife, and she is not one jot less than the husband, the daughter, and she is just as good as the son, the mother, and she is every bit as much as the father, offspring of ignorant and poor, boys apprenticed to trades, young fellows working on farms and old fellows working on farms, sailor men, merchant men, coasters, immigrants, all these I see, 
but nigher and farther the same I see. None shall escape me, and none shall wish to escape me. I bring what you much need, yet always have, not money, amours, dress, eating, erudition, but as good. I send no agent or medium, offer no representative of value, but offer the value itself. There is something that comes to one now and perpetually. It is not what is printed, preached, discussed. It eludes discussion and print. It is not to be put in a book. It is not in this book. It is for you, whoever you are. It is no farther from you than your hearing and sight are from you. It is hinted by nearest, commonest, readiest. It is ever provoked by them. You may read in many languages, yet read nothing about it. You may read the President's message and read nothing about it there, nothing in the reports from the State Department or Treasury Department or in the daily papers or weekly papers or in the census or revenue returns, prices current, or any accounts of stock. 3. The sun and stars that float in the open air, the apple-shaped earth and we upon it, surely the drift of them is something grand. I do not know what it is except that it is grand and that it is happiness, and that the enclosing purport of us here is not a speculation or bon mot or reconnaissance and that it is not something which by luck may turn out well for us, and without luck must be a failure for us, and not something which may yet be retracted in a certain contingency. The light and shade, the curious sense of body and identity, the greed that with perfect complacence devours all things, the endless pride and outstretching of man, unspeakable joys and sorrows, the wonder everyone sees and everyone else he sees, and the wonders that fill each minute of time for ever. What have you reckoned them for, camarado? Have you reckoned them for your trade, or farm work, or for the profits of your store, or to achieve yourself a position, or to fill a gentleman's leisure, or a lady's leisure? Have you reckoned that the landscape took substance and form that it might be painted in a picture, or men and women that they might be written of, or songs sung, or the attraction of gravity and the great laws and harmonious combinations and the fluids of the air as subjects for the savants? or the brown land and the blue sea for maps and charts, or the stars to be put in constellations and named fancy names, or that the growth of seeds is for agriculture tables or agriculture itself? Old institutions, 
these arts, libraries, legends, collections, and the practice handed along in manufactures, will we rate them so high? Will we rate our cash and business high? I have no objection. I rate them as high as the highest. Then a child, born of a woman and man, I rate beyond all rate. We thought our union grand, and our constitution grand. I do not say they are not grand and good, for they are. I am this day just as much in love with them as you. Then I am in love with you, and with all my fellows upon the earth. We consider Bibles and religions divine. I do not say they are not divine. I say they have all grown out of you, and may grow out of you still. It is not they who give the life, it is you who give the life. Leaves are not more shed from the trees or trees from the earth than they are shed out of you. 4. The sum of all known reverence I add up in you, whoever you are. The President is there in the White House for you. It is not you who are here for him. The secretaries act in their bureaus for you, not you here for them. The Congress convenes every twelfth month for you. Laws, courts, the forming of states, the characters of cities, the going and coming of commerce and malls are all for you. List close, my scholars, dear, doctrines, politics, and civilization exerge from you. Sculpture and monuments and anything inscribed anywhere are tallied in you. The gist of histories and statistics as far back as the records reach is in you this hour and myths and tales the same. If you were not breathing and walking here, where would they all be? The most renowned poems would be ashes, orations and plays would be vacuums. All architecture is what you do to it when you look upon it. Did you think it was in the white or gray stone, or the lines of the arches and cornices? All music is what awakes from you when you are reminded by the instruments. It is not the violins and the cornets, it is not the oboe, nor the beating drums, nor the score of the baritone singer singing his sweet romanza, nor that of the men's chorus, nor that of the woman's chorus. It is nearer and farther than they. 5. Will the whole come back then. Can each see signs of the best by a look in the looking-glass? Is there nothing greater or more? Does all sit there with you, with the mystic unseen soul? Strange and hard that paradox true I give. Objects gross and the unseen soul 
are one. House building, measuring, sawing the boards, blacksmithing, glass blowing, nail making, coopering, tin roofing, shingle dressing, ship joining, dock building, fish curing, flagging of sidewalks by flaggers, the pump, the pile driver, the great derrick, the coal kiln and brick kiln, coal mines and all that is down there, the lamps in the darkness, echoes, songs, what meditations, what vast native thoughts look through smutched faces, ironworks, forge fires in the mountains or by river banks, men around feeling the melt with huge crowbars, lumps of ore, the dew combining of ore, limestone, coal, the blast furnace and the puddling furnace, the loop lump at the bottom of the melt at last, the rolling mill, the stumpy bars of pig iron, the strong, clean-shaped trail for railroads, oil works, silk works, white lead works, the sugar house, steam saws, the great mills and factories, stone cutting, shapely trimmings for facades or windows or door lintels, the mallet, the tooth chisel, the jib to protect the thumb, the caulking iron, the kettle of boiling vault cement, and the fire under the kettle, the cotton bale, the stevedore's hook, the saw and buck of the sawyer, the mold of the molder, the working knife of the butcher, the ice saw, and all the work with ice, the work and tools of the rigger, grappler, sail-maker, block-maker, goods of the gutta-percha, papier-mâché, colors, brushes, brush-making, glazier's implements, the veneer and glue-pot, the confectioner's ornaments, the decanter and glasses, the shears and flat iron, the awl and knee-strap, the pint measure and quart measure, the counter and stool, the writing pen of quill or metal, the making of all sorts of edged tools, the brewery, brewing, the malt, the vats, everything that is done by brewers, wine-makers, vinegar-makers, coach-making, boiler-making, rope-twisting, distilling, sign-painting, lime-burning, cotton-picking, electro-plating, electro-typing, stereotyping, Stave machines, planing machines, reaping machines, plowing machines, thrashing machines, steam wagons, the cart of the carman, the omnibus, the ponderous dray, pyrotechny, letting off colored fireworks at night, fancy figures and jets, beef on the butcher's stall the slaughterhouse of the butcher, the butcher in his killing clothes, the pens of live pork, the killing hammer, the hog hook, the scalder's tub gutting, the gutter's cleaver, the packer's maul, and the plenteous winter work of pork packing, flower works, grinding of wheat, rye, maize, rice, the barrels and the half and quarter barrels, the loaded barges, the high piles on wharves and levees, the men and the work of the men on ferries, railroads, coasters, fish boats, canals, the hourly routine of your own or any man's life, the shop yard, store, or factory, 
these shows all near you by day and night workmen whoever you are your daily life in that and them the heft of the heaviest in that and them far more than you estimated and far less also in them realities for you and me in them poems for you and me in them not yourself you and your soul enclose all things regardless of estimation in them the development good in them all themes hints possibilities i do not affirm that what you see beyond is futile i do not advise you to stop i do not say leadings you thought great are not great but i say that none lead to greater than these lead to six will you seek afar off you surely come back at last in things best known to you finding the best or as good as the best in folks nearest to you finding the sweetest strongest lovingest happiness knowledge not in another place but this place not for another hour but this hour man in the first you see or touch always in friend brother nighest neighbor woman in mother sister wife the popular tastes and employments taking precedence in poems or anywhere you workwomen and workmen of these states have your own divine and strong life and all else giving place to men and women like you when the psalm sings instead of the singer when the script preaches instead of the preacher when the pulpit descends and goes instead of the carver that carved the supporting desk when i can touch the body of books by night or by day and when they touch my body back again when a university course convinces like a slumbering woman and child convince when the minted gold in the vault smiles like the night watchman's daughter when warranty deeds loaf in chairs opposite and are my friendly companions i intend to reach them my hand and make as much of them as i do of men and women like you end of book 15